Hi everyone, um, I'm Caroline Medell. I'm one of the admission counselors at SMU in Dallas, Texas. Um, and I was an IB diploma student when I was in high school. So I'm very excited to be talking with you all today. Um, I'm joined by my colleague, Alex Munoz. So I'll let Alex introduce himself as well. Hey everyone, I'm Alex Munoz. I'm uh, one of the assistant directors of admission at SMU and I help out with our IB scholarship as well as uh, downloading the IB uh, transcripts when they're available in the summer. Um, so definitely very, very excited about the IB diploma program. Yep, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you all um, so that you can see our presentation here. Let's see, there we go. Um, so to get started, um, I just wanna talk for a second about the actual IB uh, program or diploma program itself and, and how it prepares you for college. Um, I can definitely tell you that it does. Um, I, I felt like as an IB student, I was very confident and comfortable when I started um, my first year of college. I felt like I was you know, very, very capable of answering questions and raising my hand. And, um, and so it really will prepare you so much. But in particular, um, the way that you study for the IB to program IB program um, is really helpful for college. So for many of your IB exams, you are being tested on material that you've been learning for one year or two years. Um, so you really can't cram the night before. Um, it just doesn't really work that way. And so the IB program really helps you um, develop strong study skills. It also helps you to manage your time um, and to balance your academic responsibilities with your involvement and, and other responsibilities that you have. Um, and so I felt like that was something I benefited from when I got to college, um, which is being able to balance my schoolwork with everything else that I wanted to do. So um, there's a lot of benefits for, for IB students in particular. A lot of universities will award course credit um, for certain IB exam scores. So at SMU in particular, um, we have a pretty long list of different IB exams that we accept credit for. Um, and typically we just look for a score of five, six or seven on the IB exam. Um, and it, we have some that are standard level, some that are higher level courses, but um, there's quite a few that, that students can um, earn credit for. The other thing to look for, uh, a lot of universities will have academic scholarships for IB diploma students. So at SMU, um, if we see that a student has completed and earned their IB diploma, then they are designated as IB scholars and um, there's an academic scholarship of, of several thousand dollars a year um, that that student can earn in addition to any other academic scholarship that they've been awarded. So um, every school is a little bit different, but um, definitely keep your eye out for that when you're applying to colleges. Um, the other really important thing, um, you know, with, with IB is that it helps you develop your writing skills and, and how to think critically. Um, I'll talk about that a little bit with TOK and, and Alex will talk about that with extended essay as well. Um, but again, you know, it's really kind of about that balance of, of your academics, but also being committed to your community, whether that's your high school or your city, um, and really learning the importance of, of helping others. So um, I, I love that that's something that's so integrated into the IB program. Um, and last but not least, you are developing really strong communication skills and presentation skills as you're doing your TOK presentation and you're writing your extended essay. You're really um, having to hone these skills and, and to get really comfortable with them and, and that's gonna help you so much in college as well. So I'll turn it over to Alex to talk a little bit about um, course selection as you're looking at standard level and higher level courses. Great, thank you. So we definitely know in general, the, the IB diploma is gonna prepare you very well for college. So rest assured with that. I always hear from some students though that they're concerned maybe being uh, constrained by taking only the six subjects, and three higher level, three subject or standard level. Uh, but rest assured that that IB diploma in general is built to challenge yourself and it's also built to prepare you for college. So don't feel like you have to take more than what's required of you in this diploma program. Uh, universities see it already as a challenging academic program. Um, three higher level courses on its own are gonna be a challenging course load. Um, so definitely make sure you take those classes seriously and do well in them because possibly that could get you college credit. So if you do well in those subject tests, as Caroline mentioned, it could help you with maybe making your schedules a little easier in the, when you get into college by double majoring, by bringing in a few extra classes into another area. 
So do do well in those classes and make sure you're taking them seriously throughout your time in high school in the program for the IB. Um, and also make sure you take classes that interest yourself. You can definitely maybe use this time as a way to explore and see maybe what academic area you may want to major in. Um, so when you're choosing your higher level and your standard level classes, maybe choose those higher levels to be the ones that you're most interested in that you may want to continue into college. So I'll talk for a little bit about theory of knowledge or TOK. Um, this, as far as actual class itself, it looks a little bit different at every high school. Um, but the essence of this course, it's really getting you to question how and why you know the things that you know. And, and it teaches you to approach an idea from a lot of different perspectives um, and different ways of thinking. Um, and that was something that I found really interesting when I was in high school. It was probably the closest thing that I had ever taken to a psychology or sociology or philosophy class. Um, and so I, I really enjoyed that. Um, but I think what TOK teaches you is how to participate and how to be engaged in class. Um, a lot of your professors in college will um, you know, do a, a lecture style of teaching where they might have a presentation or they might be writing on a board and they're, they're just kind of sharing information with you. But more times than not, um, professors are going to want your courses to be discussion based. They're going to ask a lot of questions and some even have participation grades um, when you get to college and so they want you engaged. Um, they'll also use um, a more Socratic method of teaching. So really um, challenging you to defend why you have certain opinions and, and why you believe the things that you do and, and clarifying that further. Um, and so for some students, um, I would say that can be a little bit of a change when they get to college, but I feel like IB students are, are very comfortable with that sort of learning and, and really being able to defend um, their opinions. So um, I think the other advantage um, really that, that TOK helps with is it gives you um, an, a chance to really sort of approach interdisciplinary thinking. So really looking at a subject and how it relates to another subject. And, and that's kind of how our world works. Um, there's so many things that are interrelated. Um, when you get to college, there's a lot of classes that you can take that are very interdisciplinary. Um, so at SMU, for example, we have a major that's called health and society. And um, really kind of it looks at the economics of healthcare and it, it looks at um, kind of the natural sciences overlapping with economics, overlapping with sociology. Um, and it, it's a really fascinating major, but it's very interdisciplinary. And so students that do the TOK class um, are really used to that sort of thing. And I think that's a really awesome advantage. Um, you can certainly look for those interdisciplinary courses when you get to college. I think you'll be very well prepared for them. Um, Alex will talk a little bit now about the extended essay and, and really how that can help prepare you. Awesome. So when you're choosing your extended essay topic, we definitely want to make sure that's something that you're interested in and that you're passionate about. Uh, see it as a way to possibly explore an academic area that you may want to major in in college. Because um, maybe you start this extended essay and you do it and you're like, actually, this is maybe something I actually want to continue in college. Um, so definitely make sure that sometime that you are passionate about and that you want to maybe um, explore a little more after high school. Uh, being able to write a thought out and organized essay will be very important in college. So especially if you're interested in the humanities, as uh, Caroline mentioned, maybe with health and society, with it being a blending of academic humanities areas, um, it definitely this extended essay is going to prepare you very well to be able to write out a thoughtful essay. Um, or even if it's not a humanities major you're looking at, but you're maybe interested in going into grad school, maybe law school or a master's degree or doctor degree, having this uh, thoughtful and critical thinking skills um, definitely will prepare you very well for that next stage in life. Um, ask for assistance when you need it for the extended essay. Obviously your high school, plan it out you to complete the extended essay throughout your time, um, but it's not something you can just throw together. So make sure you ask for help, make sure you take your time and it can become the best work that you can submit. 
And I also think it's kind of a fun way also when you're doing something that you're passionate about in the extended essay, um, you can use it possibly as a conversation starter when you're talking to colleges. Um, for example, like two years ago, I was helping out with one of our scholarship programs at the university and with interviews for candidates for the scholarship. And the student was in the IB diploma program at his school and the conversation turned to what he did his, I, uh, his extended essay on. And it was really fun to hear from his passion and what he was excited about and how it connected into what his kind of long-term plan was with with his major. So you can definitely use it as a way to talk with university reps or professors in what academic area you're interested in. Um, and also, obviously, the extended essay will be graded by an external grader. Um, so make sure it's the best work that you can submit and make sure it's revised many times before it's submitted. Um, so you're putting your best foot forward for the essay in general. So another um, really important component of, of your IB program are the creativity, activity, and service hours, or CAS. Um, that's what we called them when I was in school. So um, the thing that I like to point out to students, um, you know, when you get to college, you really are only in class from anywhere of 12 to 18 credit hours a semester. Um, my first semester of college, that was a, a really big transition that I was not expecting. I was taking 15 credit hours, so I was physically sitting in class for only 15 hours a week. And I had all these other hours in the day, and I had to really make myself sit down and think about, okay, how much time do I need to study, um, to work on homework assignments, to work on papers and research, but what other time do I have in my day to get involved on my college campus? And I think that this part of the IB diploma program is really helpful for students because you're learning how to balance everything. So I like the, the CAS program in particular because it teaches you how to find the things that you're passionate about, how to learn new skills, um, and how to help other people in your community. Um, I, I can remember you know, trying to find different activities and, and things that kind of touched on each of these different points. Um, and I really, I relied heavily on my IB teachers for guidance on this. They were really great resources as I was figuring out how to do my CAS hours and, um, and the types of things that I could create that nobody had done before on my high school campus. And um, so definitely don't be afraid to ask if you're kind of stuck and, and trying to figure out how to fulfill this requirement. But many universities will have um, a very long list of student clubs and organizations that you can be a part of. Um, I know at SMU, we have over 200, I think. So it's a very long list. Um, and it's up to you to kind of identify um, what you're passionate about and, and how you want to get involved, if that's student government, politically based organizations, um, club and intramural sports, Greek life, like anything like that. Um, you have a lot of opportunities for that. So. Um, I think, you know, the other thing too, um, being really focused on community service is important. When you get to college, it's, it's easy to kind of be in a, a bubble. Um, you know, a college campus has everything you need right there. Um, and we want our students to be mindful that there's so much else going on in the world and, and there's so many ways that we can give back and we can help others. And I think that this part of the IB program has really prepared you for that. So when you get to college, of course, your, you know, your first priority should be academics and, and staying on top of your schoolwork. But um, don't be afraid to, to find these things to get involved in. It's going to really enrich your college experience so much more. Um, I'll also talk a little bit about the kind of more academic side. We, we kind of mentioned a little bit of this before, but um, of course, with the IB program, you have the six kind of main um, subject areas. So, you know, English and language, science, mathematics, everything that you can take your classes in. Uh, many colleges, especially if they are liberal arts colleges, um, they will have some kind of a common curriculum that every student completes, um, no matter what they actually major in. So we, we have something like that here at SMU. And I feel like those types of curriculums are really building upon your IB curriculum um, because you're, you're really taking all of these different subjects at the same time and you're learning how to identify how they all overlap and, and how they, they really influence you as a student and as a person. Um, and so college is really building upon that foundation. Um, but as I mentioned, um, it's really great if you can take the IB exams, um, especially if you earn scores of five, six, or seven, as many colleges will award you credit for those exams. Um, and by doing this, it does free up um, typically some time in your schedule. Um, I, I found that really helpful in college. It did 
give me the freedom to double major very easily. Um, and so for many students, this um, you know, IB exam credit helps them take on a minor or double major, um, or maybe just have time to take some extra elective courses that they're really interested in or, or ones that um, they've never been able to take in college. Classes like anthropology or economics or computer science, um, things that you may or may not have at your high school. So um, that was something that I think was really helpful is just being prepared for a college curriculum based off of the classes that you take within IB itself. And then I'll turn it over to Alex to talk a little bit about university honors programs. Yeah, so university honors programs vary by the universities that you're, and colleges that you're looking at on how they set them up. It could be something that you're automatically reviewed for. It could be something you have to apply for. Um, but no matter what, how the university sets up their program, if you're really passionate about that and you're looking for that in your college experience, uh, make sure when you're making your college list that that's an item that you're looking for. Um, and ask those university reps how they review you for the honors programs at their schools. If it's something that you're automatically considered for if it's something you have to apply for because uh, you want to make sure you're on top of it all. Um, but universities are going to look for students who have been challenged in high school academically and did well in the challenging academics. And obviously being part of the IB diploma program, you're going to be well prepared for um, an honors program no matter where you go to school. Uh, and usually the honors programs at universities are going to be smaller from the typical class and they're going to be a little more reading and writing intensive. So that's why being a part of the IB Diploma program, doing the extended essay, and having those experiences are going to prepare you very well for um, honors. Um, some programs you may have to apply for, as I mentioned. So make sure that in your high school career, at least within this IB Diploma program part, that you save your essays that you've done and save some of the work that you've done. Create a folder on your desktop of your computer and just put those items into the folders. So then possibly when you get into the college application process and you need to submit maybe an academic paper that you've done, um, possibly for an honors program, then you can just go in that folder, you can pick out your um, academic paper that you've enjoyed the most and you can submit it for the honors program that you want to apply for. Um, again, it varies by university on how they set them up. At SMU, you're automatically considered for honors. So you don't need to submit anything additional for us, um, but again, it varies by the university. Um, and having all of your IB experiences will prepare you for the expectations of the honors program. As I mentioned, they want someone who's been academically challenged and that is obviously to see that you're going to be able to stay up to the standards that are expected of you and i think our at least at our smu you're going to be very well prepared and you're going to do well in the academic classes part of the honors program if that's something that you're looking for so um you know at this time we um we can kind of i guess talk a little bit about some questions that we're commonly asked um, as admission counselors um so I guess, you know, one of the questions that I feel like I get quite a bit is, um, are there ways that students can be prepared even if they're just taking a couple of IB classes? So maybe they're not doing the full IB diploma program, but they're doing certificate or um, just taking one or two classes. And I think, you know, yes, absolutely. Anything that you're taking that's IB is going to help prepare you. Um, what I find for a lot of students who are, are doing just a couple of IB classes is they're, they're choosing the ones that they're most passionate about, and I think that's awesome. So um, maybe you're somebody who's really focused on STEM kind of areas, and so you're taking IB math or IB science or IB technology-based courses, um, and then you know that might relate to a major that you're going to do in college. Maybe you want to be an engineering major or a biology major and you're taking a couple of these IB classes um, and you can maybe test out of some of the courses that you need in those majors so you can kind of get started diving in a little bit deeper. So I would say absolutely, even if you're just taking a few IB courses, it's definitely going to help you stand out and it's, it's gonna help you be prepared, um, especially within those subjects as well too. Um, Alex, are there any other kind of questions that you feel like we get commonly um, from IB students or students kind of going into this college admission process? Yeah, I, I, the common question too is about possibly if you're interested in double majoring, how can IB credit help you um, afford that or how do you achieve that? And so definitely by doing well in your IB exams um, and varies by the university on if they're gonna be credit for higher level only or also standard level. 
Um, so when you're making your list, make sure that's the criteria you're outlining there. Um, but definitely if you can bring in some college credit from an IB exam, for us it's a five, six, or seven on an HL exam, then that can free up some time in your academic schedule and that can help you possibly work in a second major or maybe a minor in an area that you didn't even think you could do. So mm -hmm. definitely make sure you take your classes and your exams um, seriously so then it will help you in the long run. So, you know, that being said, um, it is very normal to have a lot of questions as you go through the college admission process. Um, know that we were in your shoes not too long ago, and, and we know that there's a lot of things to kind of work through. Um, and while you have, you know, awesome college counselors and teachers, know that people like us that are admission officers um, at different schools are here to help you. So um, if you ever find yourself having questions, you can contact us at ugadmission at smu.edu, um, or you can visit smu.edu slash info. Um, and so there's a lot of ways that we can help answer those questions for you. But we want to thank you for taking the time today to, you know, learn from us a little bit about how the IB program um, can really prepare you for your college experience. So good luck on those IB exams um, and everything will be so worth it. You're doing an awesome thing. Um, so best of luck and we, we look forward to hopefully seeing you visit our campus sometime soon. Awesome. Thank you.